Welcome to uh, this teaser for uh, the invited program of the International Supercomputing Conference um, this year, um, which is again a bit special. It's again in a digital version and it will happen from June 24 to July um, 2nd. So my name is uh, Hans Bungartz. Uh, I'm Dean of the Informatics Department at the Technical University of Munich in Germany and I, am, I was actually heading this uh, kind of track uh, last year and I'm also heading this track this year. The track is called Applications and Algorithms, which is of course, uh, at least from my point of view, the core, the key component of uh, high performance uh, computing. So algorithms and applications track was at or was expected to be at ISC 20. Now it has been postponed. Now it happens at ISC 21. So one could ask the question following Miss Sophie, for those of you who know her, same procedure as last year. And of course, the answer of Miss Sophie is same procedure as every year. And this is definitely right because algorithms and applications are the core they are the heart of um, computational science and engineering. On the one hand, here marked on the left side, we have, we have models, we have theory, and applications and algorithms for, from simulation science have uh, contributed for decades to make kind of a deductive research in terms of creating data, creating results out of theories, out of models. So this is this from left to write thing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we have, and this is maybe the, uh, the bit newer trend, we have on the right side, we have, we have data coming from, for example, experiments, classical experiments, but they could also come from, uh, from sensors, for example. And then, now we have data science, and data science and applications and algorithms from data science help us to now in a kind of inductive way of doing research developing uh, models, developing theory, creating insight out of data. So, of course, all is empowered by high-performance computing. That's why we place this at the ISC conference. But all of it is made possible through algorithms. And uh, why we are doing this, of course, we are doing this for, for applications, for solving grand challenges, for answering uh, important questions. So algorithms and applications, that's important, are not the same thing. They are, they are distinct. Applications ask the questions and algorithms are already part of the solutions. So these days people speak frequently of co-design uh, and they frequently say that systems and applications should be co-designed. One has to be careful, they are actually systems and Algorithms have to be, or algorithmic patterns have to be co-designed, and then of course also algorithms and applications have to be co-designed. So the algorithms are a bit in between. We have very front-end application codes, but if you look inside, they have not the state-of-the-art algorithmic solution. So that's really something independent one has to take uh, care of. So what do we mean with applications? Of course, application is actually what HPC uh, is for. That is uh, that the reason, the justification for all high performance computing efforts. We want to produce insight, insight for science, but of course also insight for uh, society. HPC plays a, an important role here because it is the core enabler that made the step possible from a traditional uh, science and engineering towards a, what we call a computational science and engineering. We have a wide spectrum of applications, of course, we cannot cover in this track. There will be only one specific flashlight on, on, on one uh, class of applications. For, of course, first there are the, what we, I would call the usual suspects. So this application from simulation science, we, we have been known and we have been working for uh, for decades. Uh, everlasting customers, very good customers with ever-growing demands. And if you look at what these um, HPC projects and applications these days do. There's of course more and more also machine learning involved uh, in these uh, classical simulation codes. But there are also completely new customers, applications that don't have this simulation 
context or spirit anymore, but that come more from a data science or even an artificial intelligence um, background. When we speak of algorithms, of course, we uh, primarily mean uh, numerical, to some extent also discrete algorithms. So these are the things that you use to solve your, your models uh, in your, in your uh, theory. And just to show how important algorithms are, just one example. Uh, this was, was taken from a, from a um, SIAM uh, survey a couple of years ago, uh, where there was just a look at, in the left graph, uh, what was the contribution of linear solvers to, to speed of computations uh, over the decades. And there we see that the progress of linear solvers, of course it's a, a rough estimation, but the progress of, of we got through linear solvers was roughly comparable to the progress we got through the progress in hardware. So this means that we could actually double to some extent uh, our our benefit from, from development. And this shows that just waiting for the next generation of machines, of course, is a strategy, but it's, it's, it's not the strategy one should, one should follow. We also need the progress in uh, algorithms. And we need it tremendously because in the same time, and that's what we show on the right side, also the models get more and more complex. That means the requirements uh, to computational effort gets higher and higher. So there's a justification, there's really a need for these kinds of progress in hardware and in uh, algorithms. Okay, so that's why we have organized this track in roughly four uh, sessions where we have four kind of light motifs. Uh, the first one is uh, HPC empowering uh, artificial intelligence in the sense that if you look at what artificial intelligence applications in their core, in their algorithmic core need, then it's maybe not all, but a lot of uh, the things is numerical linear algebra. And this is, of course, empowered and has a long tradition in uh, HPC. So the chair of this uh, session will be George Beerus from the uh, University of Texas in Austin. This, our second session makes it the other way around. Uh, so empowering AI, empowering H HPC. So what can AI uh, contribute in methodology to, to foster, to support, to accelerate uh, high performance computing. Of course, a lot of the techniques that we have in mind there have to do with uh, more or less with uh, machine learning. And the chair of this second session will be uh, Florina Choba from the University of Basel in Switzerland. Then session three now addresses, as I said before, one snapshot in this huge application landscape. And the topic uh, we have decided on for this year is, is, HPC, is HPC for the energy transition. So which is, of course, a, a, a very up-to-date uh, topic. But uh, yeah, as I said, just one uh, topic. And this shows where HPC really can, where and how HPC can help for uh, scientific and societal progress. And the chair of that is Herbert Owen from the Barcelona Supercomputing Center in Spain. And finally, the, the last session, the fourth session, deals with mixed arithmetics. Um, yeah, and this reflects that at the end of the day, we have to do calculations, we have to do computations. So how can we do this? How, and how can we do this in a, very, in a very efficient way? For decades, there has been basically uh, the IEEE uh, notation, so with, with uh, single and double floating point uh, precision. This has been the kind of the dominant male, and uh, now there have emerged a couple of alternative approaches. And this is the theme of our, fur, of our fourth uh, session, which is on mixed arithmetics, and the chair here is John Gustafsson from NUS Singapore. And now, just very briefly, uh, I don't give you a lot of time for looking at these slides because I don't have that much time anymore. Just very briefly what we do in this session. So HPC empowering AI, that's of course for, for sure. It started with uh, um, uh, GPUs and there are libraries, for example, the GEM, which have, have been developed in an, in an HPC context, but which are today, of course, widely used in, in um, um, AI ap applications. Then we have this AI empowering HPC thing. Of course, there are a lot of 
topics where you can easily imagine that if we do it in a smarter and a more intelligent way, we can improve efficiency. Uh, self-organizing, scheduling, load balancing, research management, energy optimization, so really staking, uh, keeping a, a specific energy corridor, all these kind of things uh, can be uh, obviously supported, for example, by machine learning ap uh, approaches. So there are tons of aspects where it's very obvious that uh, AI and machine learning can also make a very significant con contribution to uh, high performance uh, computing. And, and, and here we have just the, the, maybe the two different pillars. So as I said, on the right-hand side, this kind of maintenance organization thing, but on the left-hand side also in the uh, modeling and simulation uh, approaches and codes. That's what I mentioned at the very beginning, that more and more uh, simulation applications, of course, have also some machine learning uh, integrated in their, in their codes, not, so not only for organization, but also in the, in the codes them, them, themselves. Then we have this, this energy topic, energy transition topic. This is, of course, a very important topic. Uh, how can we answer the big uh, energy questions uh, society has? And finally, the mixed arithmetics one, uh, starting from the thesis that right-sizing precision is one of the best options we have for reducing energy con consumption. So uh, don't uh, always use the maximum of precision if you don't need it. That's kind of the uh, short message, and this will be the, the topic of our fourth uh, contribution. Okay, I hope that this teaser was able to tease you a bit, to, to raise your appetite uh, and join us in uh, our trek, which will be um, spread over a couple of days in this uh, bit more than a week of this year's uh, ISC 2021 digital so see you soon, see you uh, at latest there and enjoy. Thanks for your attention.